standing here Not knowing how we'll get through this test But holding on to faith you know best And nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out and you're watching us now but when it looks as if we can't win you wrap us in your arms you wrap us in your arms and step in and everything we need you supply and everything we need you supply you got this in control and now we know that you made a way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and, and it looks as if it was over you you made a way and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you made a way And now we're here yeah. Looking back on where we've come from Because of you Because of you Deserve the love and mercy you shown, but your grace was strong enough to pick us up, and you made our way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was over. You made our and we're standing here and we're standing here only because you made you made a you made our way when our backs were when our backs were against the wall and it looked, and it looked as if it was over you you made our way we're standing and we're standing here only because you made a way. Oh, you move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is that's impossible that we're standing here only because you made. you move you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform Against the walls, and it looked 
as if it was over you you made our way and we're standing here and we're standing oh, no. only because you've made
wipe away all tears to mend the broken heart you're the answer to it all Jesus you wipe away all tears you mend the broken heart you're the answer to it all Jesus you wipe you wipe away all you mend the broken heart You're the answer to it all Jesus You wipe away my tears You mend my broken heart You're the answer You're the answer You're the answer You are here Touching it I worship you. I worship you. You are here, meeting every day. I worship you. I worship you. You're the way maker, way maker. Promise keeper, light in the dark. That is who you are. You're a waymaker. Miracle work. Promise me a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Waymaker. Miracle work. Promise me a light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You're our way maker. We make a miracle work. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. 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 Promise keeper, you're the light in our darkness, oh God. Oh, we worship you. You're a healer, oh God. You're a deliverer, oh Lord. You're a provider. You're a child. Oh, we glorify your name. Hallelujah. Well done, brother. You all may have your seats. Good morning, everyone. How was your week? I bring you greetings, first of all, to the father of the house. <laughs> Dr. Anthony, and the members of the board, and all my fellow Kingdom Ambassador brothers and sisters, welcome. I'm under instructions from Daddy, so I'll really be operating in my surname today in a rush. <laughs> oh Lord, how wonderful it is 
to have assembly and fellowship one with another. It's such a beautiful thing. Oh, today I just permit me to share an exhortation of encouragement to us on the subject, manifesting the mind of Christ. And our theme for the year is, believers see God's glory. So everything we do in life must be demonstrative so that the glory of God can be seen evidently. The last time I shared, I shared on the glory of God's love to one another, those who could remember. And um, I was doing a study on Philippians for some time now. And when I was scheduled to minister, <laughs> excuse me, when I was scheduled to minister, I started to prepare for this on this particular topic. And then I got the news of how much time I have. <laughs> when daddy gave instructions, you get instructions. You could prepare where you want. You have to give, use the time. So my main text is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. And just to give a background, this letter was sent to the church at Philippi while the Apostle Paul was imprisoned in Rome for two years. However, Paul had such a genuine love, such a genuine concern, and a very authentic intimate, face-to-face -face relationship with this church. And we can also see, if you go through the whole um, four chapters, there are two main things there. One, you can sense the personal relationship he had, one, and his encouragement to rejoice, according to Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And I say, when we see two, two specific things mentioned in Scripture, it is done under the law of what they call double mention. And Paul was encouraging, just imagine, he, he, while I was doing this thing as Every time I read something, I remember pastor. <laughs> Honestly. The genuineness, the compassion and care, the empathy, and the concern and love for what God has given him responsibility for, which is all of us here. And you, you all remember the last time I preached, I went by his knees, right? Who could remember and I said, Daddy, I do, I'm, not, um, I'm not Elisha. I don't want a double. I want a thousand portion I only have. <laughs> and I'm very serious with that, honestly. I'm very serious with that. <laughs> yeah, so um, Paul was in prison for two years. And the church got news of it by whatever means. The, the scripture doesn't tell us how they got the information. However... The church, out of genuine concern for the apostle, appointed Epaphroditus as an envoy to go to visit Paul, have conversation rather, so that they could get an understanding of what is going on with him. They just didn't appoint him and send him. Eh? And that is something I paid attention to. They gave Epaphroditus a financial gift. This man is in prison, right? So it tells us that um, it presupposes that there's a culture then in the prison system where you could have purchased stuff 
or you could have used money. Because if that wasn't the case, they wouldn't have sent him financial assistance. But when Epaphroditus got there and he realized that Paul's situation and his needs warrants much more, this man makes a calculated, intentional decision to stay in Rome, <laughs> get a job, to raise money, to ensure that the pastor, the church, the shepherd, the apostle of the Philippian church, all his needs must be met. And he went to such an extensive measure that he became sick. <laughs> So it tells you of the amount of energy this man was putting out to ensure that he meets the need of Paul. Let me just back up here a bit. And that is why I always tell people, your money is not for them fellas in the States. It's for the one who labor in preaching and teaching. Your money is for Rama Ministries. And all you can always hear me saying that because I'm real serious about it. We just send money all over the place for all kinds of people who end spending one second on their knees before God first. <laughs> so 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 this man got sick. And knowing Paul, looking at Paul's background and how he functions and how he dealt with Timothy, I want to suggest that Paul was praying for this man because God intervened and healed him from his sickness. Then Paul instructs him and sends him back to Philippi to inform the church what is taking place. And what is amazing with Paul, when Epaphroditus got back there, and informing them. The church mindset was this. Oh gosh, pastor ministry done. But Paul rises up and says, my ministry is not at an end. God is using this experience for the propagation and advancement of the gospel. It brings me back to Daddy last week Sunday. <laughs> when he stood up here, he said, let me tell all you something. Age is just a number. All you remember that? Right. I won't go no further. And I was telling somebody at the back when um, his cousin stood up and was talking about the cousin's age. I was telling somebody, I can't remember who it is now. I said, hey, you see that DNA in them, Anthony's? I want that. 83, 85. What you're doing for that looking? Only looking better than my second brother, Pastor. <laughs> I'm telling you. Honestly, ask Jeremy if you feel alike. <laughs> People just ask them if my second brother is my grandfather. That, 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 that's a tell only. And I'm the eldest child. Eh? <laughs> so, so, so they, um, this Paul, and while I was writing it, the Lord said to me, this is why I said, in my word, through the same Paul, I work at all things for good to them that are called, they that are predestined before the foundation of this world. And the Lord in some day, he said, that's why I also said, is that this is a double portion also. He said, didn't I say, whatsoever the enemy tries for evil, I, God, will turn it around for good. So, so just pick it. I have some people here, brothers, you say you're going to jail. I say, I'm serious. As I prepare to go to jail, any nation God sent me in the earth, and they want to lock me off the gospel, I read it a long, long time. But we'll make CNN news. Because the same thing I'm with Paul and them, is, and Peter them, it's happened, because my name is Peter too. And I am more anointed and more Holy Ghost filled than Peter and them. 
So it must make news. And nobody can kill me. I'm serious. You see, we read a scripture sometimes. This is just by the way. We read a scripture. Um, when, um, when the enemy something, okay, I get, um, God will raise a standard. When the enemy come like a flood. God will raise a standard. Like this. Let me demonstrate this story. Yeah, take a lot of things from that. Yeah, this is the one platform too. When God is in his position, seated on the right hand of the Father, and the enemy comes against you, Jesus changes his position. He rises up and takes his position in front of you. Why? Because he is the greater one that is inside of you, and he's greater than the one who said in the, said the fiery darts. And the enemy would always, it's a warfare strategy. It's a clinical military thing, you know. It's like when you see the fellows who give the prime minister and the president, and you see they just come so, a car just comes, a vehicle just comes so, and we vex in Trinidad. <laughs> the enemy in the, that scenario needs a window of three seconds opportunity to take out the principal. Three seconds, target acquisition. That is why that is done. But we make noise here because nobody never killed no prime minister or president here. It's the same thing God, Jesus does. He rises up and comes in front. The enemy had to come through. <laughs> Understand that today. <laughs> That's why I don't take on nobody. Don't tell me anything. You'll get handled. <laughs> I it. It, we had a situation in church last week. Pastor, nobody will tell you because he's not telling you. We are in a time of the latter days when we have to do what this book says. What Paul was encouraging the Philippian church to do Rejoice always. I say rejoice. Right? It does not matter what challenges face in your life. What the neighbor doing, who's saying what. You must learn, and I'm going to get to that just now, how we are to rejoice in every situation. Right? Because God gave us an authority but to function in that authority, we have to live here. Have you seen me? Anybody seen me? We have to live in God's face and presence. That is the key. Well, you feel a lie? Go and talk to that gentleman, the ancestor. I lived by them for seven years. That's why I don't make jokes with them. <laughs> They're my parents for true. They live this book. Daily. And we have to come to that place like the church at, at Philippi. That word that Paul, that encouragement that Paul was given to them, it is also for us today. We are the New Testament church in this season operating under the dispensation of grace. But we have taken grace to a limit in the church that feel we could live anyhow and do anything. <laughs> that is why we are so weak. Because Satan don't open doors, as we just open it for him. You know, I don't make this joke. I say, you know, I try to put myself in Satan's place of day, Pastor. <laughs> and I said, I want my truth. We go along the road, we only sell food. And everybody's doing everything, nothing. Just step out the pavement and spread my foot. Believers, words come out. This devil. You wasn't vigilant. You're minding your business. How Satan come in that? And I feel he, he and they be said, these God people are again blaming me for everything. <laughs> so, 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 so Paul even imprisoned. This man have a tenacity. This man have a fervor. This man have a zeal that is intentional and deliberate where his ministry and service to God and relationship with God is. That is how we must be. 
I was here with the youth last night. And something we decided to start, to bridge the gap. I reached home. I went to sleep. And was up by 12. I asleep since that. Sister Vixen, I text the manager, and I responded. She knew them I was. I up. <laughs> you have to make an individual, personal, calculated, intentional decision and choice to love, to be always hungry, and to pursue him because he gave us a covenant. They that hunger and thirst shall be filled. So if you ain't hungry and your wife cooked this nice, nice pillow for you, three days pass, you still are hungry. Spider got to eat it. That is the dog name. <laughs> Spider is the dog. Because you ain't had this hunger and this thirst, and this passion, oh gosh, sister auntie, well, you know I'll make reference to daddy, and sister, you have a real, real sweet aunt, she don't cook again, she entitled to do that, she cooking up, right, and cook what he loves, plenty, I wouldn't go there, he, he tell us Sunday going, <laughs> And we have to be in that place, right? And when we come into that place, what Paul, the information Paul got from Epaphroditus and others who came to visit him at Rome was this. There seems to be a creeping in of this unity in each other among the believers, Right? And listen to what <laughs> I just go into the purposes of the letter that Paul write to the church, right? It's nine of them I just going to share two because of time. Right? One, Paul wanted to relieve their anxiety over the circumstances of his imprisonment. You'll, you'll see that in Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 to 30. That whole chapter addresses that. Right? Two. The growing disunity that was developing in the Philippian church among the members, Paul appealed to them to manifest humility and unity. Philippians 2, verses 1 to 8. Now, we might have said how, how we know that there was this unity. Because the apostle addressed it. He was encouraging them from the information he had received. And similarly, likewise, for us, we might get anxious about stuff. We might get information for somebody. If we hear pastor, God forbid he again sick now at all. Everybody's get concerned. We know a little challenge going on with must be Melanie. Everybody concerned. But the point is this. How do you transfer authentically that concern into treating with the issue. And there we go to pray. <laughs> and the word of God. Encouragement for one another. My wife just said, boy, you always on the phone. Sometimes I say, babes, yeah, yeah, that is, that is one of my ministry, to call and encourage people. I'll be on the phone all of us. And, and, and we have to understand what our calling is, what our assignment is individually. My assignment is different to everybody. And I take it very, very, very seriously. 
and one is encouragement. That is a ministry I have. God give that to me. So Lord is fine encouragement. So I just told you all I'm going to, I'm just taking two from the purposes because of time. Right? So 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 those are two. One of the things we observe in 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 the epistle is the is the it's one of the epistles in the Pauline line of epistles that is strictly based and founded on joy and rejoicing. So I'm jumping ahead to that now. Because my <laughs> right? I'm I'm jumping ahead, right? To where what we are required to do in rejoicing in the different spheres. <laughs> so, and, and we have nine, also, we have nine areas to rejoice in also, right? So, I'm going to deal with number four. We are to rejoice in the purpose of Christ. Turn with me to um, chapter 2 from verses 12 to 16. From 12, verse 12 and 14 deals with our, man's responsibility in rejoicing in the purpose of God. And in the next verse, verse 13, it elucidates God's responsibility to us in his purposes. And this one I love. In the selflessness of fellow believers. We have to be rejoicing. But how does that come about? Just as Christ emptied himself. And those, those who know the whole, who use the text. Um, Christian doctrine by Kevin Connor. And you're dealing with. The doctrine of Christ, you would see where it alludes to that even though Christ emptied himself, and for the theologian and Bible school students and lecturers here, I'm going into the kenosis theory now, which speaks of how Christ emptied himself. And what is amazing? He did, he never emptied himself of his essential attributes and his moral attributes. He maintained those, however, through the Father, he did all the stuff he did. But he was still God eternal as Christ. Even past eternity, in his mother's womb, and as, a, as my kingdom ambassador, graduating sister said, make sure you come Bible school and learn stuff. You see, in this time, we're in, of hopelessness, you see how long I stretch it? The only institution on the planet that have the solutions for the issues of life is God church, all of us. And you cannot, you know, Gemma does always tell people, cannot this used to be always say people cannot give what they don't have. And she said, Yeah, I now understand what I mean. <laughs> I say, if and this is not nothing against pastors or anything, eh? I just want to be clear because I deal with a lot of them. And all you know, I like to always go by daddy and show off. He is the real deal. He is the promise that God promised for us. I would give you shepherds after my own heart. He is that. A lot of them, JCLs. Where you going with that? Johnny come late, please. That is my abbreviation for them. Just get a certificate and they want to tell you what the Lord tell them. And when you call them prophet, 
as tell people, I say, move from here, and I kick you out of here like a World Cup penalty goal, just chopping it. No track record, full of the self. No lifestyle demonstrative. I just boast. Anywhere I go in the world, I just boast. First thing I give God thanks for when they, interdu- when they introduce me in the pulpit. God thanks. And Lord, thank you for my spiritual parents and for Rima Fellowship Ministries. I just said big and brave and brazen and bad. I don't care who the books. We must appreciate what God did and through whom he did it. Is them. Have me standing here and talking to them two people. Who will like it too bad. Teaching life example. And they have permission to call a lady and ask if I behave in good. I give the, the other authority accountable to them for everything in my life and ministry. There is nothing I do in ministry that he is ignorant of. Ask him. A church sent an invitation for me today, and I'm confronted just Saturday. I say, send it to this email address. That is my pastor office, and this is his name. We have to understand the protocol of the kingdom and do it how God wants it done. So, so, so we have examples of the selflessness. Just as Christ emptied himself, we have to empty ourselves. But the problem is we only talk about Philippians 4.19 about material things. Any selflessness in Christ as he modeled is a need to function as he wants us to function. And if he is the supplier of all our needs and also the said apostle Paul said Covet the best gifts. If you want to be selfless like Christ, you have to go and ask him. If they have no shortcut, that is a need to become like him. We have to go to him and ask him. And what he says, whatsoever you ask in my name, believe in, The Father in heaven will do it. Jesus is the primary, ultimate, eternal intercessor. And we need to really connect with him. Because he is not ignorant. (laughs) He maintained his attributes of omniscience omnipotence, omnipresence. I could go down the whole gauntlet. Because that is who he is. So Paul, Paul have this passion and he's encouraging the church. Right? I, I want to promise all you, I'll get this type up and leave a copy. It's nine pages. <laughs> Right? From Philippians 1 to 4. And we, today, as the body of Christ, are entitled to follow the same pattern of verse 5. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. What that means? Your mind is what causes you to think. So what Paul was saying, let this, the word this there means the pattern that Jesus modeled in humility, servanthood and service according to John chapter 13. Verses 10 to 15, where he washed the disciples' feet. He was explaining to them, listen to me. And Peter with the hot mouth, fresh self, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, cool yourself, boy. 
<laughs> I'm not doing this for you. <laughs> I'm doing this to teach you all how to be functioning in ministry with humility, with a spirit of servanthood and service to one another. So we are called into that same place and more so on this occasion to my sisters. You are going out into a nation of wolves. <laughs> that is why Paul encouraged Timothy, his son, and give him a prerequisite vision of how mankind would be. Well, you feel this fellas with fellas going on now? <laughs> Paul talked to Timothy about that. Men will be lovers of themselves. Stella with Sheila, John with James. No offense to Brother James, and you're not including that. You are a complete man, I know that. You see this fella here? Pray for me. Because. The LGBTQ. <laughs> I hate it so much I don't even like the pronouns. <laughs> the manifesto and the gay manifesto written in 1950 prophesied by words how they're going to come and impact our sons and daughters. And we sit down laughing <laughs> like we're in a remarriage track like a horse. That is a joke. That is a serious thing. They had to lock me up. Anytime the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and let me tell you what they said before I finish. The, the United Nations is one of the biggest nurturers of this nonsense. The IMF, the Inter American Development Bank, the Angen Development Bank, because when you want a loan as a nation, that is the fine print. Are waiting for them. Uh, anytime they once I know they sign it because it's monitor all them things. And I have a good Christian brother and friends that ambassador in the United Nations, so I just know everything. This fella will deal with them. Pray for me plenty. Because you know? I'm going to take them on hook, line, and sinker. They're not coming to mess up my nation, which God say is a blessed land. Is a model nation and a beacon of light to all nations in the earth. He didn't even say that by Israel. I don't play with things in Trinidad. We had to get serious. As the end time kingdom embassy, army, and diplomatic ambassadors, he called us to be. That is who we are. That is what the church is. Every ministry. Is a battalion headquarters in the body of Christ. When people come through that door, if their life is right, they must, they must feel something. The presence of God. Last week, Sunday, when I came here, when we had the book sale, Sister Rachel, it was last week or week before. Anyhow, when we had the book table, I came through that door. I saw a man all in white. The Holy Spirit said, You and he got a face up. Oh. And I just laughed and went in the office with Brother Ali. Shuma was at the book table. And um, Brother Lance came, Brother Rush, we have a situation outside. I say, who, the fellow all in white? He say, yeah, I say, I'm coming. <laughs> and I went outside. And he turned with Shuma and telling Shuma what he believed and all your Pentecostal. Well, I fix up that, like that. Eat it up like a... And send him on his way, explaining him his rights under the Constitution of Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. So here I'm going to tell him how to leave. I say, yeah, that is a right freedom of movement. Start moving. <laughs> you see, I do play. They are going by no mandir and must and do them stupidness. They're not coming here once I hear. I don't care who he is. You will be dealt with accordingly. God house, we must re they must respect it. And respect God, people. We playing and grinning and skidding. No, time for that done. 
Since we get saved, God tell us through Paul, hey, all in a war, boy, there's warfare. Check out the kings in all the armor. Make sure the armor is solid. So I want to tell you all today, <laughs> rejoice. It does not matter what. We are to take on the mindset, follow the model, and the pattern of Jesus. It's time for change. Let us please stand. I'll finish. I will not go beyond the time.